All right, so this is something we definitely got to talk about. If you're someone who has an RTX 5070 Ti, or any RTX 50 series GPU for that matter, you're definitely going to want to consider undervolting your GPU, because in doing so, you can end up reducing the power consumption quite significantly, which also leads to lower noise and heat. But on top of that, you can also end up getting a performance boost. It's a win-win situation all around. I'll be showing you guys how I undervolted my RTX 5070 Ti and the results versus stock and also overclocked. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. You're gonna have to bear with me a little bit because allergy season has not been kind to me this time around. Today we're gonna be taking a look at undervolting the RTX 5070 Ti and I was pretty excited to make this video because the results are quite promising. If you guys haven't seen my full review of the RTX 5070 Ti where I benchmark over 30 games and also my overview video where I go over the design aspects of the graphics card itself, I'll have those links in the video description description if you want to check them out. One of the reasons why I want to tackle undervolting is because over these past few years I feel like these semiconductor companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Intel all have been way too ambitious and they all end up pushing the silicon much harder from the factory where they've strayed far off from the efficient sweet, uh, sweet spot of that specific node or the manufacturing process. So this results in parts having a, an official TDP rating that is, you know, much higher than what we're typically accustomed to. I mean, if you take a look at the RTX 50 series, you'll see that power figures across the board have gone up compared to the previous generation, which was already fairly high to begin with. The RTX 5070 Ti has a TDP of 300 watts, and, you know, if we go back to the RTX 20 series, the flagship 2080 Ti had a TDP of 250 watts. So power consumption on GPUs has gone up quite considerably over the years and this is an area where I feel like we just keep kind of going backwards in and it really doesn't have to be that way which is something that I find very intriguing because I have undervolted various GPUs and have done testing for the channel and my findings were always positive from the RTX 3060 Ti to the RTX 4090. I have always found that you can significantly reduce your power while still maintaining performance that's close to stock if not even better. The RTX 5070 Ti here is no exception, and I've been quite pleased with the results. Remember the good old days of the 70 class just consuming like 150 watts but still giving you ample performance? Well, what if I told you the RTX 5070 Ti could perform just like that? And, you know, this actually signifies the remarkable uh, enhancements or refinements that TSMC has done with this node. Because remember, Blackwell has been manufactured on the same manufacturing process as Ada Lovelace, which is what the RTX 40 series was based on. But I found that through overclocking, you can actually clock these 50 series cards quite a bit higher. And that is if you're going for a max OC configuration. Though once you guys see these results, I think you'll be leaning more towards the undervolting route. With that said, let's go over how I undervolted my RTX 5070 Ti, and you can use this method on pretty much any NVIDIA GPU for that matter. Using MSI Afterburner, it's actually very straightforward to undervolt. So your version of MSI Afterburner might look a little bit different, but I'm just using the legacy skin because it's just what I've been using since the start, and it just works for me, so no point in changing it. What you want to do first is raise the power limit all the way to the max. Don't worry, you're not going to be actually forcing the card to use max power all the time, it just allows the card to have access to the highest headroom, which I find opens up the boost algorithm more, but you'll see that when we actually apply the undervolt, power consumption is going to go down, and the GPU runs much more efficiently. Then on your keyboard, press Ctrl and then the F key, which will open up this frequency voltage graph. This will show your card's stock curve and at which voltage point the card runs the GPU frequency. You might be a bit lost on where to start and which voltage point to target, so if you're unsure and you need a reference, what I recommend you you do is download 3D Mark's demo on Steam, and with it you can get a benchmark called Steel Nomad. It's a fairly heavy GPU synthetic test. You'll want to run this benchmark in windowed mode and keep the frequency voltage chart up from MSI Afterburner as the test is running so you can actually see which voltage and frequency the card is targeting out of the box. And so this gives you a good reference point on where to start off. Now typically for Nvidia cards you can start off with 900 millivolts and for the 50 series you can target 
something like 2900 megahertz and work your way from around there. So what you want to do is grab the 900 millivolt point and raise it to 2900 megahertz and then press enter. Next what you'll want to do is hold shift and hold right click from that point and bring your cursor over all the way to the right so this will select everything on the curve from that point you selected and onwards. Then you hold shift and press enter twice and then this will flatten your curve so now when you run the benchmark or any game the card is going to run at this voltage and target this frequency. It's not going to be exactly 2900 megahertz. there will be a bit of variance depending on temps and the type of workload. Now I urge you to play around with this and find a sweet spot for your graphics card or what you think is a good point that gives you the performance that you're looking for and to also save a bit of power. I've seen people report that they could do 3100 megahertz at 925 millivolts. Some people settle for something really aggressive like 850 millivolts at 2600 megahertz and this will also depend on the silicon quality of your chip. You're going to want to stress test your card and see if that configuration is stable. On my RTX 5070 Ti, I decided to settle for 2930 MHz at 875 millivolts, and you'll see why as we go over the gaming benchmarks, but I found this to give me a slight boost over stock but lower power considerably leading to better temps. Along with that, and this is what will help you give your card more performance, I recommend overclocking your memory. I found most RTX 50 series GPUs can run a plus 2000 MHz offset and still be stable, but, but again, you're going to want to test this and find what's stable for your card. And remember, this is error correcting memory. So if you're not stable, it's not just going to crash, but rather you'll just lose performance. So keep an eye on your FPS and scores when you're overclocking your memory and find what works best for your card. So with my RTX 5070 Ti running at 875 millivolts with a target frequency of 2930 megahertz and a plus 2000 offset on the memory, this allows my card to not only run faster than stock, but we also save power, which leads to lower noise. And for my test, I did normalize the fan speed so to isolate the temperature difference. Let's get into the benchmarks results and you know I'll have the system specs down in the video description to save some time. The first game we'll take a look at is Spider-Man 2. After checking out this side-by-side -side comparison of Spider-Man 2 at 1440p ultra settings, I'm honestly impressed by how well the RTX 5070 Ti undervolts. Compared to stock, the undervolt configuration not only cuts power consumption dramatically, but even managed a solid 4% bump in average FPS, essentially free performance on the table. Sure, pushing a full-blown overclock squeezed out like another 3%, but seeing that power draw spike isn't exactly reassuring, especially when the undervolt already gets you nearly the same performance. Undervolting is clearly the smarter play here, keeping your system cooler, quieter, and more efficient without really sacrificing frames. I definitely recommend RTX 5070 Ti owners to give this tweak a shot. But we're just getting started here, so the next game we're going to take a look at is Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, and here we also see some excellent results. With the undervolt configuration, we're seeing the card run at around 190 watts compared to the 230 watts on stock, but we're also seeing about 6% faster performance. Temps are also very nice, and compared to the overclocked configuration, the perceived performance wouldn't even be noticeable, but as you guys can see, power consumption is significantly lower. Undervolting the RTX 5070 Ti feels like a no-brainer. Why waste power when you can gain performance and efficiency over stock? After checking out these side-by-side -side results from Monster Hunter Wilds at 1440p Ultra, it's pretty clear that undervolting hits the sweet spot yet again. Undervolted, the RTX 5070 Ti runs at just about 160 watts, way below the 190-200 watts of the stock configuration, and still delivers around 4% higher FPS on average, with better 1% lows too. Sure, cranking things up with an overclock bumps up performance slightly further by another 3 FPS on average, but seeing power consumption jump around 60 watts higher for that minor gain feels hard to justify. Once again, undervolting proves to be the smarter choice, delivering smoother gameplay and lower temps without the hefty power draw penalty. Undervolt proves to be a better choice in terms of efficiency by far in Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. We're seeing the card pull around 200 watts compared to the stock configuration, which pulls around 230 to 240 watts of power while being about 4% faster on average. While the overclocked configuration is the best, it's only faster by like 3% over the undervolt configuration, so to me it doesn't really seem like it's a it unless you're after every frame. Taking a look at Stalker 2 running at 1440p epic settings, the undervolted RTX 5070 Ti once again delivers impressive results that sit comfortably between stock and a full-blown overclock. While the overclock 
watt configuration pulls considerably more power, around 230 to 240 watts, the undervolt configuration dramatically lowers that power draw, consistently staying within the 170 to 190 watt range. Despite the substantial reduction in power, performance remains excellent, actually edging out stock by roughly 3 to 5 percent, and coming incredibly close to the fully overclocked results, only trailing by a couple of percentage points at most. It's clear that from this test as well, undervolting your RTX 5070 Ti gives you nearly all the performance gains of an aggressive overclock without the excessive power consumption and heat, making it once again the idle choice for gamers. Now taking a look at Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 1440p low settings, this game responds very positively to the overclocked RTX 5070 Ti clearly rewarding the higher frequencies with significantly improved frame rates. What's interesting here is that even though the overclock pushes the power into roughly the 210 to 240 watt range, it's not nearly as extreme compared to the previous games, making it somewhat easier to justify for those chasing maximum performance in this competitive shooter. Meanwhile, the undervolt still impresses, maintaining a comfortable power draw in the 150 to 180 watt range, delivering a solid bump in FPS compared to stock, sitting neatly between stock and the OC results. If you're purely after maximum frames, an OC is more digestible here, but if you prefer a balanced approach, undervolting remains a fantastic middle ground. Now looking at Black Myth Wukong at 1440p very high settings, it's clear that this game is extremely demanding, and here undervolting your RTX 5070 Ti really shows its value. The undervolted setup sits comfortably between stock and overclocked in terms of performance, providing roughly a 2-4 FPS boost over stock while noticeably cutting power usage down from the stock 230 to 240 watts to a far more efficient 190 to 200 watt range. The overclock does squeeze out a bit more performance, but seeing the power consumption consistently hit around 250 to 255 watts makes that small FPS gain less appealing. Given how visually impressive and graphically demanding the game is, I'd say the undervolt strikes the ideal balance, keeping your card cooler, quieter, and still delivering very solid gameplay performance. Moving on to Warhammer Space Marine 2, at 1440p ultra settings, this title clearly benefits from pushing the RTX 5070 Ti harder, as the overclocked configuration delivers a noticeable uplift in FPS compared to the stock and undervolt configs. However, this increase comes with a hefty spike in power usage, reaching into the 290 to 310 watt range, which is pretty substantial. The undervolted setup, on the other hand, achieves a strong balance by significantly cutting power consumption down to around 220 to 230 watts, while still maintaining frame rates comfortably ahead of stock, typically about a 5 to 7 percent in improvement. If absolute maximum performance is the goal, the OC might still be appealing here, but the undervolted RTX 5070 Ti remains the sweet spot for gamers wanting excellent performance without having to pay such a high cost in power and heat. Next up is Horizon Forbidden West at 1440p very high settings. The undervolted RTX 5070 Ti continues to show great results, landing comfortably between stock and overclock in both performance and power efficiency. The undervolt consistently delivers about 3-5% higher FPS compared to stock, while significantly reducing power consumption, drawing roughly between 185 to 195 watts compared to the stock's 220 to 235 watt range. While the overclock manages to push FPS even further, that does come at the expense of higher power draw, often and hitting around 240 to 260 watts. For gamers looking to balance efficiency and performance without stressing their GPUs, undervolting clearly is the way to go here. Finally, taking a look at Lies of P, which is the last game, at 1440p best settings, we see another solid showcase for undervolting. The undervolted 5070 Ti sits comfortably between the stock and overclock configs, delivering a notable FPS uplift around 4-5% compared to stock, while power usage stays significantly lower, typically hovering around the 215 to 230 watt versus the stock's high higher 245 to 265 watt draw. While the overclock pushes the highest frames here, hitting upwards of 280 FPS, that does come with a steep power penalty, often closing to 280 to 300 watts. Yet again, undervolting emerges as the optimal solution for most gamers, providing the ideal blend of power savings, lower temperatures, and increased power performance over stock. Looking at the 10 game average at 1440p, the undervolted RTX 5070 Ti consistently hits that performance sweet spot, offering a roughly 4-5% boost over stock while significantly reducing power consumption and thermals. While the fully overclocked setup pushes things even further, landing about 5% ahead of the undervolt setup, the gains come with notably higher power draw and higher heat output, making it less appealing for everyday use. The undervolt configuration sits perfectly in between, delivering nearly all the benefits of overclocking without the power penalty and noticeably improving 1% lows compared to stock. After all these tests, it's clear that undervolting the RTX 5070 Ti is really a no-brainer for most gamers. 
After doing this deep dive of undervolting with the RTX 5070 Ti, it's clear that Nvidia's factory settings leave plenty of untapped potential on the table. The performance gains and the dramatic efficiency improvements really underlines just how far the silicon tuning has strayed from the ideal balance of performance, thermals, and power draw out of the box. It's honestly baffling that GPU makers aren't optimizing their products more aggressively at the factory, especially when gamers can achieve these results with just a few minutes using something like MSI Afterburner, that's a third-party program. Undervolting in this case proves that you don't have to settle for excessive heat, noise, and power consumption, especially when you can enjoy superior performance at the same time. And, you know, if you've got an RTX 5070 Ti or any 50 series GPU, or even an AMD card, or really any GPU from, like, the last few generations, I highly recommend undervolting it. It's just practically essential these days. But for now, that's going to be wrapping it up for this one, you guys, and we'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.